orca whale breach and it seems unstoppable, a monarch of the waves. But those magnificent creatures are desperately vulnerable. Their numbers now on the west coast only in the dozens. But right now, four new baby orcas are a sign of hope for the species, if they survive. Here again is Chris Brown, who traveled to Vancouver's Gulf Islands to follow their path. You can often hear them before you see them. The southern resident orcas of Canada's west coast are the most closely watched marine mammals in the world. On any given day, underwater there, they swim right by people's homes. Ooh, I got sprayed. And their video cameras. Ooh, I got sprayed again. They are urban whales living on the fringes of big cities in congested waters. Their habitat and food sources are under threat. Their survival is precarious. It's fragile. You know, this could end. These whales really, really could wink out on us, this entire population. But for the first time in a long time, there is positive news, so we're going out for a look. We're just north of Seattle, and we're heading out into Puget Sound, and the chances are excellent that we'll see some of the 81 resident orcas that live in the waters off Vancouver Island in Washington State. But what we're really looking for today are their babies, four calves born within the last six months, a reason to celebrate for sure for scientists and for everyone here. There's also lots of cause for concern, too. Along for the trip is Michael Harris, the head of the Pacific Whale Watch Association. When these animals got listed under the Endangered Species Act and under the Species at Risk Act in Canada, many people thought that they were on a perhaps an irreversible slide to extinction. And can you imagine this region without southern resident orcas? Several different groups of orcas live off the west coast. Transients roam the entire length of the continent and eat seals. There are northern residents and southern residents, which eat salmon. A population typically needs about three or four hundred members to be viable. When scientists first started counting the southern residents in the 1960s, there were just 96. Dozens of whales were captured for aquariums before the practice was stopped in the 1970s. The numbers recovered somewhat, but in the last decade, deaths have outnumbered births. So, four new calves born between December and April is a very big deal. Taking this fast U.S. boat means we can cover lots of water. Hey, Bee, did you see it? Yeah. And it gives us the best chance of finding the orcas. Oh, that's a little one. And just a few kilometers off Vancouver Island, we strike whale watching gold. <laughs> That's one of the babies playfully jumping out of the water, looking strong and healthy. But the baby we're seeing out here, we think, is J50. J50 was born end of December of this past year, and because it was a difficult delivery, scientists believe that actually two members of this pod that we've seen out here actually midwifed this baby, pulled this baby out of its mother. It's awe inspiring when you see them with their little ones. It just. It just gives you a warm, warm, fuzzy feeling. Unfortunately, that warm, fuzzy feeling often doesn't last. Orca calves have just a 50% chance of surviving their first year, which is why scientists are cautious about calling this orca baby boom a turning point, particularly after what happened last December. A dead, pregnant whale with a full-term calf washed ashore on Vancouver Island. The loss of J-32, or Rhapsody as she'd been nicknamed, was a blow. Breeding age females are critical to the population's survival, and there are just 28 of them. She was also the fourth whale to die in the previous six months, and the necropsy determined she was badly malnourished. Scientists were left with a sense of desperation. When a new calf was spotted a few weeks later, U.S. scientists from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, rushed out to see if there might be others. 
and the news was good. This is a new cast that's less than a week old, and it's the second surviving cast of L94, and uh, it's very exciting because it hasn't been a new birth on Alpod for a few years, so, so we're happy. There are three pods of southern resident whales, J, K, and L. There's the new guy. Yep. Three of the new babies are from J-Pod, which Canadians tend to see more frequently because the pod often swims close to BC's Gulf Islands. This guy must be here somewhere. Where the heck did he go? The Vancouver Aquarium is also keen to track the progress of the orca babies. Marine mammal specialist Lance Barrett-Leonard and his team know these whales personally. I look at them and those blotches look pretty similar. Mm, no, they look very different to me. We call the white patch on the back the saddle patch. Mm -hmm. Most of the killer whales don't have that. This guy is very distinct. They're very much like humans in, in so many ways. And I know as biologists we're not allowed to talk about this, but their life history, you know, the way they live their lives, their age, their, their, when they reach sexual maturity, when they start feeding, um, is pretty closely aligned time-wise with the situation with humans. The babies face three main threats. The first is lack of food. Orcas are among nature's pickiest eaters. How important are Chinook salmon to orcas? The Chinook salmon are, are, are just phenomenally important to, to, to these resident killer whales. In a good salmon year, there's plenty to eat. In a poor salmon year, they're on the edge. So we think part of the, the reason that the reproduction is so low is because of, of, of food supply and fluctuations in food supply. Chinook are the largest Pacific salmon, with some growing to more than 30 kilos. Pollution in rivers and warmer conditions in the ocean have dramatically reduced Chinook runs and put pressure on the southern residents' food. Ironically, other orca populations, like the transient killer whales that occasionally swim here, have lots of food because they eat seals. There's lots of uh, lots of potential food there. That looks like tasty dinner. Yeah, I mean, southern residents are uh, they're not on the menu. They're really uh, very very salmon focused and. Uh, and seals, uh, they pay no attention to. They'd they rather like, starve than eat a seal. That's true. That's just, uh, you know, it's like us. There are lots of foods that culturally just aren't acceptable to humans in different cultures, and uh, the killer whales are the same. Pollution is another big worry. Orcas live as long as people, 100 years, in the buildup of toxins in their system from pulp mills and coastal industries has made these the most contaminated marine creatures on Earth. The fear is a major oil spill in these waters could be catastrophic. And there is still much to learn about how boat noise in these busy waters affects orca behavior. Last summer, the Vancouver Aquarium used drones for the first time to try to better understand the threats orcas are facing. We can see down into the water much better than we can from an angle from the boat. We see a lot of behaviors, you know, a lot of social behaviors going on with the animals that we didn't, didn't see previously. Constantly touching, they tend to swim together. They're so close that they're packed, you know, less than a body length apart. From the air, this is striking because you see these, these tightly packed whales and you see this big expanse of ocean. There's lots of room for them there, so they don't have to be that close to stay together, and yet they do, they choose to. So that's very striking. And they can also see the impact of not getting enough to eat. That depression behind the head of one orca is a sign of starvation. This whale was dead within a few months. Oh yeah, yeah, there's something there. On this trip with the aquarium team, it seems we've lucked out again and found another orca pod. Oh, there's a blow. There's something. There's a whale there. There it is. It is a whale, but not an orca. It's a humpback. Yeah, and this one was in the mood to show yeah, off. So. Whoa! Beautiful. <laughs> so, not the whale we were hoping for, but a remarkable sight nonetheless. Nice. Because more frequent sightings of humpbacks in these waters suggest, in spite of all the challenges, the outlook for all whales may be improving. Are we doing some right things? Can can we take some credit for these uh, four calves? I think I think we can take some credit for for uh, for the situation in southern residents. This this 
potential improvement. We as a society have been steadily improving the, the situation as far as contaminants are concerned. There's a lot of uh, commercial whale watching uh, activity in this area, so sometimes these whales can have 10 or 15 or 20 or 50 boats around them. I would say some years ago, that was a pretty desperate situation because these boats tended to be far too close, but the, particularly the commercial whale watchers have become much better behaved. It's those close, frequent encounters with people that make these orcas feel special. Wow! Like they're part of our neighborhood. And that without them here, our own communities would feel diminished. There is cautious optimism that despite all the threats they face, the newest orcas will make it to their first birthdays. They don't look skinny, their mums don't seem undernourished, and at least on our trip, the little one we saw was pretty vigorous. So far, it's the best news these endangered, iconic creatures could hope for. He got some air! That was cool! Chris Brown, CBC News, off Vancouver Island. Well, southern residents may be among the most watched whales now, but they were once a mystery, ignored by commercial whalers, dismissed as vicious vermin. That is, until 1964, when the Vancouver Aquarium got a southern resident in captivity. Uh, we asked ourselves, what could we possibly do with a live killer whale? Well, Bidal was harpooned off the Vancouver coast, but survived and dispelled many myths surrounding his species. Many expected a ferocious predator, but found a docile social animal. Keeping orcas in captivity is now controversial. But 50 years ago, Moby Dolls sparked public fascination, leading to the understanding of orcas we have today.